Good morning, everybody, and hello to my GBFs. How are we doing today? Today, I'm not going to lie, it's a little cold out here in Orlando. It's about maybe pushing 55 degrees this morning. I, I am going to be pulling out a really cute sweater today. What's the weather like over where you are? I really want to know. It's about 10 a.m. on January 29th, and I wanted to have a conversation with you guys about a conversation that I had with one of my really close friends up north about self-care and what that really means, because she doesn't think she's, like, done stuff for relaxation or self-care. It's just the way we are wired, my friend and I. She and I have had these conversations about how come we seem to be a part of the very lower percentage of people who at work really care about their job or really feel like we put 100% in and is that really fair because we get paid the same as our coworkers and the people we're close with at work. And they seem to take off from work just because they have a mental health day. And why, while in theory, I believe that this is really important, uh, self-care and taking that mental health day, I have to be honest, I think my whole career of working uh, for like the last almost 30 years, I've taken maybe three mental health days. Um and with that said, what is a mental health day? What is self-care? What is relaxation? Because is it a feeling? Is it like doing something for yourself that makes you feel as though, you know, you... Well, all right. So here's my definition. My personal definition is what I told her. Um, relaxation or doing something that relaxes you is something that you do to take your mindset off of out of your everyday reality so you so you're doing something where you aren't thinking about the bills that you have to pay doing things that will take your mind away from your to-do list you know all the things that you're responsible for because we are all responsible for something we're responsible for other people, our animals, our pets, you know, our children. We are in charge and responsible for putting food on our table for ourselves. Things that we just have to do. We have to do this on an everyday level, which can be very overwhelming and burdening to a degree to the point where the, these things pile up. And when they pile up, that's when you kind of freak out a little bit and you're like, oh my God, I have, you know, we try to shove 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag and everything starts overflowing and we're freaking out and we just almost get paralyzed. At least I, speaking personally here, I find myself getting paralyzed where I can't do things and I feel guilty when people ask me to go do something with them that would be considered fun well fun is a relative term because i don't know what fun really is if i was to sit down and have to write down you know five things that i really like that you know i do that is considered fun that would take me out of the everyday stressors of i guess the real world or life my responsibilities I do mindless stuff. Um, some of the mindless things I guess I do is get lost in watching YouTube. I will get caught in, in that little YouTube hole of watching like 20 videos and look up and I realize, oh my God, my day is almost over and or I've lost a big chunk of time in my day. And then I get even more stressed and then I think, well, was that really worth it? Did, you know, it was fine during that little period of time 
in the grand scheme of things, several hours of watching YouTube is a really little amount of time. But I could have been be I could have been more productive. I could have done things that made me, you know, lower my to do list. I did read a book several years ago called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and It's All Small Stuff. The one thing I remember out of that book from reading it when it came out like 20 something years ago was your inbox will always be full. Now, what does that mean? That basically means in very simple terms, no matter what you're adding to your to do list. If you're at a job and you have your inbox or, you know, you got all these emails with things that your boss wants you to do, your daily routines at work that you have to do to be a productive employee to make sure your job gets done what what will happen if you lose your job god forbid what will happen if you know you decide to go on vacation or take that elusive mental health day or you become sick for a couple of days and you have to stay in bed or can't come to work that inbox does not go away they will get the job done, so why stress about it? It will get done no matter what you do. You will never be like, oh, I have absolutely nothing I can do at work today. I have absolutely nothing I can do around my house. You know, there's always laundry that has to get done. Uh, there's always a room that needs to get extra care with cleaning and straightening up. There's always grocery shopping that has to happen. There's always something, you know, whether it's, especially if you own a home, that list like triples, easily triples with the amount of things that you have to do. So self-care is really important. And as for somebody who lays down at bed and tr at night and tries to go to sleep, what happens for me is my brain some nights, not every night, but some nights my brain will not shut off. I'm always thinking about the next thing that has to get done. Did I really waste, you know, use my time efficiently during the day? What is the number one thing I have to do? Top three things I have to do tomorrow when I wake up. If I wake up early, you know, I have to make sure I get up early enough to be productive and ready to go. I also wind up thinking about, which is actually... It's actually really interesting. One of the only ways I can fall asleep um, when my mind is in this like ongoing circle of craziness is think about something I've done in the past that I've done in repetition over and over and over again, whether it's the a time I was walking around one of the theme parks and riding rides or, you know, um, scrolling through emails and stuff just something repetitious that I've done and then I lose myself in that and then I'll fall asleep but what I have been known to do in the past and I still do every once in a while is I will go on YouTube which is not always great to shut your mind down but I do watch relaxation videos or meditating self-guided meditation videos about or soundtracks about um, relaxing and relaxing is really important but what does that mean I'm not 100% sure still if you know I understand what relaxation means now realistically if you were to look up the definition it means to make it become less tense or anxious um, or make less strict when not, you know, I don't, I don't know, when, make less strict the rules that you have for yourself, which is a great thing. I am sure it's great for the people who can do it, but going back to the conversation my friend and I had, we were like, well, what do we do for self-care? The things we do and the things that I do seem to be necessary things that have to happen. It's almost like even if you make self-care as a part of your to-do list, 
it's just another box to check off. It's just something else you have to do during the day. And some people are really good at being able to do that. I am just not one of those people. Expectation versus reality plays a really big part of my life where I expect to have an amazing time. And this is something I'm really looking forward to doing, like going to the Madonna Madam X concert. This is what I was going to do. I, you know, booked a hotel room. I, you know, did all the to-do checklists, you know, checked every box off that I need to do to be able to go to the Madonna concert, gas up the car, check out the route, make sure I left on time, make sure I woke up on time, packing an overnight bag on top of my everyday world. Um, responsibilities, making sure the laundry was done, enough laundry that I had clothes to be, clean clothes to be able to bring. Was I going to wear something really special? Was I wearing something, you know, for this occasion? Because Madonna does not go on concert very often anymore. And, you know, having a backup plan in case she canceled her concert because she had been canceling several concerts because of uh, injuries, uh, hip and leg injuries. And then when I get there, I went to Miami, Florida to see her. And this is where expectation versus reality happens. I get there and then there was a big fucking nightmare about parking your car in Miami Beach. Just so you know, if you ever go to Miami Beach, it's not the best place to bring a car. You have to park it um, in a garage and several garages have different prices and times that you come in and out. And, you know, it was 40 bucks I didn't even think about, you know, I thought I'd be able to, that the hotel had parking. It didn't. So I had to go and pay 40 bucks to be able to park my car. Um, going to eat that day, uh, cause I had, I didn't have a place I wanted to have dinner. So there I am walking around Miami beach, trying to make a decision. What do I really want to do? Get to the concert after I get to the concert. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. And here I am trying to watch my one of my favorite artists of all time, the, the, the person who I would think that I would like to go to in my music collection to be able to relax and get my mind off of things. Here I am sitting in a small theater in Miami Beach thinking this is going to be really great and people are getting up and walking around. People are late to their seats before the concert starts. People are standing up in front of me. Now I have to stand up and people were around me were getting annoyed that other people were standing up when all they wanted to do was sit down during the ballot. I know it again, the list goes on and on. But at the end of the day, I drove home, which normally would be like a three, three and a half hour drive. Six hours and 45 minutes later, I get home much later, pushing everything else back. And again, that messed up my schedule. Not even my routine, my to-do list. My to-do list was still full. My to-do list now was overflowing because I promised my kids that I would, you know, have dinner with them that night. That didn't happen. So I had to worry about making sure that they had food. Granted, my kids are adults, young adults, but they weren't expecting to have to, um, fend for themselves for food. I mean, we had food in the house, but it was, well, dad's going to be home in time and I'm not going to eat because I know he's going to be able to, we're going to have dinner together. It didn't happen. So that I felt guilty about that. And it made me think the money and the time that I had spent, was it well worth this quote unquote self care doing something for me? thing like was it really worth it at the end of the day and I have to come to terms with the fact that living in the present moment at the time listening to certain songs that yes it was worth it um don't know if I'm gonna have this opportunity ever again to be able to do something that I love so much or see someone that I respect so much that I would be able to you know then I should just chalk it up to this was a good time regardless. Like, um, even though I was a little upset mentally thinking about it, um, at the time in the present moment, I 